Formed in 1993, Daft Punk were pioneers of house, electronic, and dance music, whose mystery and anonymity brought intrigue from all over. The French duo pushed the boundaries and soared to new heights, mixing genres from funk, disco, synth-pop, hip-hop, and more to create their unique sound. Constantly delivering us new content with each musical step, Daft Punk truly paved the way for a future generation of artists. Today, we're giving you 10 very interesting facts you might not know about the iconic pair, Daft Punk. Before Daft Punk, Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo and Thomas Bangalter were part of a different band called Darlin. Homem Cristo and Bangalter formed Darling, a name inspired by the title of the Beach Boys song, in 1992 alongside third bandmate Laurent Brankowitz. Darling's time was short-lived, ultimately disbanding in 1993 after releasing only a handful of songs. Omen Cristo and Bangalter went on to form Daft Punk, while Laurent Brankowitz joined his brother's band, Phoenix. Phoenix, as we know, would come to achieve great success. Ironically, Daft Punk got their name from a journalist's criticism of Darlin's music, who called it, quote, a Daft Punky thrash. Despite the split, Omem Cristo, Bangalter, and Bronkowitz still remain friends to this day. The two Daft Punk members even joined Phoenix on stage at their Madison Square Garden concert in October of 2010 for a surprise performance. Daft Punk played their hit songs Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, and Around the World for the delighted audience, and took part in Phoenix's performance of 1901. The performance was also Daft Punk's first live appearance in over three years, minus the 2008 Grammy Awards, making it even more iconic and shocking to the crowd. Daft Punk's iconic uniform helmets reportedly cost $65,000 to make. This was a massive upgrade from the first Daft Punk era, in which Omem Cristo and Bangalter wore Halloween store masks or face paint to hide themselves. The Punks teamed up with special effects genius Tony Gardner for the band's Discovery era to design high-tech masks to match the band's aesthetic with the direction their music was headed. Even more important to the band was separating the person from the music. Bangalter says, we like to play with fiction and reality. Dividing the public image from the private one is a very personal statement. But by wearing masks in the past and being robots now, we believe people actually see more of our personalities through the music we create. The masks required some incredibly advanced resources to put together. In the beginning, Gardner used the same company that does the metalizing for NASA's spacesuits for Daft Punk's first face shell. Gardner also worked with the man who designed the Jumbotron screens for the LED feature on Omem Cristo's mask. With the advancement of technology, Daft Punk's masks experienced multiple upgrades over the years, allowing their gear to be sleeker and faster. The engineers of Daft Punk's album, Random Access Memories, were so terrified about transporting the album that they drove from Los Angeles all the way to the East Coast to hand deliver it. Engineers Peter Franco and Sam Cooper teamed up for the road trip to avoid the album being victim to metal detectors, lost mail, and leaks. The stakes were understandably high, as the album has been four years in the making, with millions of dollars having been put into it. As we know, Daft Punk members are also fans of the element of surprise and are famous for their elusivity and, therefore, were not about to risk ruining their master plan. Franco explains his anxiety surrounding the album's secrecy, saying, Four years in the studio, it was crazy. So at the end, when we were finishing mixing, there was no way we were going to let the master tapes leave our sight. So we started another journey. If the tapes were lost, I think I would change my name, become a scuba diving instructor in Costa Rica. Each tape is unique, and each mix is unique. There's only one of them, and they existed in that trunk of the car. With the help of Franco and Cooper, the album was safely and successfully delivered and went on to be a massive hit. Daft Punk's 2006 film, Electroma, has a cult following. Ironically, Electroma features none of Daft Punk's own music. The avant-garde science fiction film was directed by Omen Cristo and Bangalter and is about two robots, dressed in Daft Punk's robotic forms, who are trying to become human. The film premiered at the famous Cannes Film Festival in 2006 and received mixed reviews. However, it soon became a midnight movie screening around the world, which is how it got such a cult following. Omem Cristo says the following about the film becoming a midnight movie. 
We are really happy with Electroma. With the recent major live show there with thousands of people there, Electroma was at the other end, very low key, more underground, rather than a blockbuster. It's a movie that played theaters at midnight on Saturday nights. I think in America and everywhere, if it's a niche of a cult movie. I won't say Electroma is, it's too much of an honor, but it's really cool that Electroma plays at a midnight movie like El Topo did in the 70s. That's a place for Electroma rather than a big premiere with red carpets and stuff. We would be happy if it plays once a week for the right people. It's a deep, deep surprise for us and the people we work with. Daft Punk's first ever live television appearance was a surprise performance at the 2008 Grammys. The duo joined Kanye West on stage to perform his hit song, Stronger, which samples Daft Punk's Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. West, in fact, won the Grammy for Best Rap Solo Performance for the song at the award show, and Daft Punk would eventually receive a Grammy for their version of the song in 2009. The performance started with Wes rapping in front of a giant pyramid, in which Daft Punk emerged from halfway through the show. The duo sported their iconic black and red LED outfits with, of course, matching helmets. The collaboration between Daft Punk and Wes received rave reviews. Omem Cristo recounts his experience with Wes, saying, When we met him, he was a fan as much as we are fans of his work. It was like if we had collaborated him in the studio. He was happy to see that we liked it so much. It's not a collaboration in the studio, but the vibe of the music we do separately connected in what he did with the song. It's really great. The musical pair would embark on future collaborations with each other, including West's 2013 album, Yeezus. Daft Punk's 2001 hit album, Discovery, is a concept album about the duo's childhood. Unlike their first album, Homework, which consisted of pure electronic music, Discovery is noted for its experimentation with various song structures and musical forms. The duo also explored music in a different way with this second album, in an attempt to emulate their experience listening to music as children, which they described as much more simple, honest, and open. Ben Galter explains this idea further, saying, this album has a lot to do with our childhood and the memories of the state we were in at that stage of our lives. It's about our personal relationship to that time. It's less of a tribute to the music from 1975 and 1985 as an era and more about focusing on the time when we were 0 to 10 years old. When you're a child, you don't judge or analyze music. You just like it because you like it. You're not concerned with whether it's cool or not. Sometimes you might relate to just one thing in a song, such as the guitar sound. This album takes a playful, fun, and colorful look at music. Although known for their mystery and anonymity, Daft Punk has appeared in mainstream media multiple times. These appearances, in which the pair are usually suited in robotic gear, are actually credited for being one of the reasons why they became so popular to audiences beyond the electronic music scene. The duo is especially known for their appearances in TV commercials. Over the years, they have worked with major brands including Gap, Adidas, and Sony Ericsson. In fact, their 2001 commercial with Gap resulted in a partnership in which Omem Cristo and Bangalter could contractually only appear wearing Gap clothing. In 2006, the pair was featured wearing their Discovery Era uniform in Sony Ericsson's advertisement for their new mobile phone, and in 2010, they promoted Adidas Star Wars clothing line. Daft Punk's biggest collaboration was perhaps with Coca-Cola. In March of 2010, they teamed up with the major brand to make the limited edition Daft Coke. The Coke bottles came in silver and gold and were served at clubs in Europe and other special locations. There was also even a collector's box set, which is incredibly rare. Daft Punk's 2006 Coachella performance is often credited with changing the course of music and the conscious going experience. The performance was sensory overload in the best way possible, and brought even more attention to electronic dance music. It set off a catalyst of performers, especially DJs, to bring their live shows to the next level, and it makes it more of an overall experience. The show did of course leave a dent in Daft Punk's pockets due to its extravagant production value. Bangalter explains, saying, the interesting thing was that Coachella was a big offer financially, and that triggered the ability to bring the show to the next level. We were ready to play again. We've never done anything for the money or tried to take economic advantage, but we have crazy ideas and these ideas can be expensive. The ideas we had for this tour required 20 people on the road. It's not like these big rock stars with hundreds of people, but it's still very challenging. A lot of technology and computers and sets. Knowing that now we could do things we couldn't do when we played in a 1,000-person venue triggered crazier ideas and the ability to make it happen. 
Daft Punk prides themselves on always doing something different, not just for others, but for themselves as well. This is why many of their albums can be defined as eras, as each is a step in a new direction from their previous work. It's also why they create different personas for these eras. They're creating whole different experiences, both musically and visually, with each album. Bengalter explains this fascination with newness when speaking about Daft Punk's album, Discovery, saying, We've always been interested in doing different things in the past, but always different to what people are doing. The only interaction with the outside we have when we make music is not to do what has already been done. We didn't want it any way to do what we did on the first album. The fact that we did influence the music was a funny thing. What we did, to be novel, became the norm, and that encouraged us to explore and experiment even more and to innovate new music. The freedom of making music is really the most important part of making electronic music. This mindset sets Daft Punk apart from many other electronic arts, and is a primary reason as to why they are so highly acclaimed for their originality. After almost three decades of partnership, Daft Punk broke up a few weeks ago. Their publicist, Catherine Frazier, confirms the news on February 23rd, 2021, but gave no reason for the split. The duo announced their breakup through a YouTube video entitled Epilogue, in which Oman Cristo's robot self sets off the detonator on the back of Bengalter's robot self. Robotic Omen Cristo is then seen walking towards the horizon. The footage comes from their 2006 film Electroma and features music from their 8-minute song Touch. The unconventional style of this breakup announcement is very much in fashion with the rest of Daft Punk's career moves, using cryptic and indirect messages. And just days after the announcement, Daft Punk's streaming had increased by 2,650%. Many are mourning the duo split, as they had one of the largest fan bases in the electronic music scene, although they only released four full-length studio albums, by blending funk, pop, hip-hop, house, indie, and synth-pop into one outstanding genre. Inspiring already countless musicians of our time, Daft Punk will also be leaving a legacy for many to come. Well, that's all for today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.